Well, I got a little package from Mouser. Let's open it and see what I got. Right, Snickers? Snickers. <laughs> I had a guest over yesterday. A friend I actually met on YouTube. He was in the area, so he dropped on in and uh, talked about music and electronics. But Snickers wasn't very cordial to the guest. He kind of was skittish and wouldn't hang out. So, yeah, no, Snickers, you got to treat guests better. Treat them like they're welcome. <laughs> what? Huh? Really? Okay, well, we're going to do an amplifier video here. But first, let's see what I got in the mouser box before I get started. And here we go. We got some 33 and 15 ohm 2 watt resistors for LEDs, just dropping resistors. These are 1% resistors for uh, digital analog converter for microcontroller projects. These are uh, infrared LEDs, 5 millimeter. Supposed to be high output. And this is a 2N3866RF power transistor. I forget, 4 or 5 watts. I need to get a heat sink for it, but some uh, fun with that. And more of these Cree. CXA-1304 LEDs, you know, 4,000 Kelvin, 5,000 Kelvin. These are awesome. Got plenty of projects for them. But enough of that, let's get on to our amplifier. Okay, what I'm going to do is breadboard this TDA-1558Q chip amp. I'm not going to build out a full amplifier with a case and everything. I'd eventually like to do that, but for now I'm just going to breadboard it and show you how easy it is to use these things. This is uh, the Philips TDA 1558Q. It's an obsolete part. I uh, bought it a long time ago, sitting in my parts bin. Never really did anything with them. Of course, Philips. Now... Um, spin off their semiconductor segment to uh, well at least it's now called NXP semiconductors I don't know if it's still under the Philips umbrella or it's completely separate I don't know but uh, that's the way it is now but they make they still make different versions of this similar type of chip it's a stereo bridge type amplifier there's four amplifiers inside this chip and they're paired up to make two bridge amplifiers for stereo. And they're often used in car stereo head units. So they want to, you know, there's not a lot of space in one of those things with all the, um, at least back when these were out, there's uh, uh, CD player mechanisms and all the other parts for the, uh, you know, the electronics for the radio and the rest of the circuit. So they really cut down on the parts needed to make these things. In fact, you can make this thing work with three capacitors. Though, in the final circuit, I recommend using more to make a, you know, a better amplifier, but it will work just using three little film capacitors. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw this on a breadboard and uh, show you the circuit. Okay, I have the chip set up. I soldered the jumpers on the leads so I don't have to deal with those on the board. And there's some, some pins tied together. Uh, like the... Uh, I tied pin 14 and 13 together because... And you just want to hold that mute on. I don't want to use the mute function. And, you know, there's some other pins that tie together, like 16 and 17. And 
one and two because we're using it as a bridge amp instead of a uh, four single ended type amplifier circuits. But in the bridge mode, you see here I just have three film caps. One is the uh, power supply. This one here in the middle is the power supply decoupling, and the other two are just the input coupling capacitors. Now, if you're actually going to use this in a circuit, like I said, I'll probably have more components. Like I'd recommend, you know, if your your supply is distance from the chip itself, I would add this across the power supply lead because it you know helps with the heavy current transients. And I would add some high frequency bypass caps on the input so it doesn't oscillate and do some funny things. But still, you don't need a lot of parts for these things. They're real easy to use. I still need to clamp on my heat sink here. Um, so why use these chips compared to, like in the last video, I had the TDA-2003. Why use these things instead? Well, the TDA-2003 with a 4-ohm load, and they typically, typically rate them at 14.4 volts. Uh, yeah, 14.4 volts. They'll give you 4 or 5 watts of output before clipping. So if you want more power than that, these are the chips you want to use because they're bridged. Now they kind of overrate them. They, they rate them like this one's rated 22 watts per channel into 4 ohms. However, that's a ridiculous, useless 10% distortion. The actual clean power you get out of these things will be in the neighborhood of 13 or 14 watts. So again, that's no clipping, clean power in the 4 ohm load. Running them at, you know, with like a battery, 12.6 volts, you'll get around uh, 12 watts per channel into 4 ohm loads. So yeah, you get a lot more power when you use a bridge amp. Okay, I'm going to hook up the heat sink and uh, for actual use, this heat sink really isn't big enough, but just for this demonstration, it'll work. And we'll uh, put some music through it. Okay, I have my Sony Walkman music player connected to the inputs of the chip. And I'll just hit the button here. It's all ready to rock. Power is on. Okay, that's just some uh, music off of Jamendo, so I don't have to worry about those uh, copyright strikes and all that fun stuff. And that's pretty good music there. Check it out. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, it sounds pretty good. Very easy to use, and decent amount of power from them. Now, one thing about these chips that are real touchy about signal and power grounds, but you. You know, you really should take care of that anyway when you build an amplifier. You don't want to mix your ground signals together from your your power ground and your input ground. So you, you get a lot of distortion. You know, if you're getting uh, kind of a buzzing sound or a hissing sound or even kind of a whenever the beat of the music, like the bass drum hits and you kind of get a... I don't know how to describe it, but it's kind of like a just you know just, just a distortion. It's probably because you don't have your grounds right, and you got to keep the small signal input and uh, feedback grounds away from the power grounds. Of course, this chip has internal feedback. It, you know, it's set feedback, so you really don't don't really don't have to worry about that much. <clears throat> and uh, another thing I like to say on these chips is. For some reason, this chip has very high gain. It says on the um, data sheet it has like 46 dB of gain. Whew! 
Whew, why so much? It kind of works with the MP3 player in that, uh, you know, get it really loud. I don't have to turn it up very loud. But, you know, so much gain, you're going to get some hiss from your speakers. But, of course, for a portable type system, yeah, that's not a big deal. Now some other BTL chips meant for car stereo. They only have 20 dB of gain, and that's just way too small. It's not going to work well with a MP3 player without a preamp because you turn the thing as loud as it goes and the amp's still hardly making any output. Um, ideal gain is around 40 dB if you have a um, if you're using it with a music player. But that's it. Just wanted to breadboard a bridge amp and show you how easy it is. Thanks for